Can I just say, I cannot believe that I haven't already made this video. Hi, I'm Becca. I'm an elementary music teacher, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about teacher versus student points, which is one of my favorite whole group classroom management strategies to use in my class. I have used it at two different schools now, and it works wonders, I would say, to really help with keeping the class on track, helping them make sure they work as a team. So let's talk all about it. We're going to talk about what teacher versus student points are, what some of the like rewards you could use are, and then maybe a couple things that you might want to do if it's not working because, you know, classroom management is going to depend a lot on your students in your school. And so it, you know, it may not work for every class, but here we go. So first of all, teacher versus student points is a whole brain teaching strategy. I will link the whole brain teaching book that I read that was wonderful down below. I will also link, they have a free course you can take that goes through lots of different strategies. I love them. I use a lot of them. I don't use all of them, but I use a lot of them. And teacher versus student points is one of my favorites. Basically the idea is that the class works as a team and if they're doing a good job, then they get a point. If they are not doing a good job, then I get a point. As I explained it to them, actually just today, we talked through our four different music room rules. Mine are follow directions, be respectful, be responsible, be a participant. I say it like that because I always have the kids clap them. So I do follow directions and they repeat them after me. We go over those pretty much every single day in every single class. So they really have them down. And then I tell them if you are doing those things as a team, then you are at a point. And I have like little magnets that I put on the board. I'll pop up a picture here so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and they get a magnet under student. If I get a point, because like if for me, it's like if I have to, if we have to redo an activity, like if we sit down, but we don't do it right, we have to stand back up and then sit back down. Or if people are talking and I have to stop and keep doing my attention getters, things like that, that's when I earn points. My points take yours away. So if you have five, I have three, you're down to two. And I always say, so do you want me to get points? They're like, no. I'm like, do you want to get points? They're like, yes. So that's basically the idea of teacher versus student points. When the kids get a point, they say, oh yeah. And when I get a point, they go, oh no. The points do have to lead to something though. So part two is what are some of those rewards that you could use? Well, let's talk about it. This is gonna depend widely based on how you see your kids, when you see your kids, what your school-wide things are. My school has a whole school incentive called Gator Bucks. And so I hand out Gator Bucks to classes when they're doing a good job. So what I do is I take however many they get, subtract any that I get, and then however many they have left, that's how many Gator Bucks they get for the day. So that made my life super, super easy when I got there and they already have that system in place because then I don't have to do anything. The school turns in Gator Bucks, the classes turn in Gator Bucks to get different things like a dress down day or a pizza party or different things like that. So they, they can like redeem them after they get so many and anyone in the school can give out class gator bucks. So that's number one. Um, now in the past, I used to see my kids for a week at a time. So what I did when I saw them for a week at a time is I had a different point board for each class. So I had like third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. So I could keep track of everything and we would earn points all week long. And then on Friday, we would have game time. So we would take your points, subtract my points. I would shoot for like 10 is kind of what I wanted them to have by the end of the week. And then however many points you had, we had that many minutes that we would play a game. And it was always a game we'd already played before. And honestly, I wrote it into my lesson plan. So like we were gonna play the game either way, it's fine. Um, but the idea is, you know, if they only have two points, then we would have to play something really quick. If they have 15 points, then we get to play for a long time things like that. And that worked really well when I had my students for a week at a time. So those are some things that I like because I didn't have to buy anything. I have to do prizes, those kind of things. But some suggestions you could do um, if you don't see your kids a week at a time, you could keep track long term. So I actually I did this years ago where I would have every teacher's name and we would add however many points you got each week. And once you hit a certain number, then you got a game day for the whole day. Like we would play games the whole day or a movie day for the whole day. Um, and so you could do, you know, when you hit 50 points, then your class gets uh, whatever you choose day. Or you could do class against class. So you could do like the highest fourth grade class in this quarter gets something special. That worked really well with certain grade levels, but with other grade levels where you have like some classes that are always great and some classes that are never great. Um, the ones who were never great lost that ambition really quickly. So do be aware of that. You want to do that only if they're like all very similar in point earning abilities. I've also had some classes that were 
a little extra fun. And so we needed constant, constant, constant um, reinforcement. So what I did with those kind of classes is I would do minutes of freeze dance at the end of class. So if we got three, we would have three minutes of freeze dance at the end of class. If we had 10, we'd have 10 minutes of freeze dance at the end of class. And so by doing that, that meant that every single day we got to have that really tangible reward that they could feel. Again, I try not to buy anything, but you could buy something. You could bring snacks. You could do, you know, whatever you want. I've also seen where teachers had like special instrument time at the end of class, or if your kids are really into like just dance or something like that, you could have that at the end of class. Those are all lots of different options that you could use. So I know I just threw a lot of different things out there. You have to decide what's going to work best for your students based on how often you see them and what they are interested in. Now, part three, um, I actually recently got this question from someone in my district. What do you do when it's just not working? Like if you are constantly earning points, the kids aren't earning any points, or if you have those classes that are half and half or, you know, three quarters and one quarter, um, that's just struggles. Um, so the first question is, what do you do if you keep earning points? If this is a consistent thing, then the problem is that you need to go back and reteach your expectations. So if I am constantly having to stop because people are talking, then I need to reteach, reiterate that we're not talking, tell them why, and I need to have something specific that helps them know whether or not it's appropriate to be talking. So for example, if you have a callback, so for example, if you say class, class, they say yes, yes, that's also a whole brain teaching thing, by the way, um, then we would practice that. And the practice is what you're gonna need. So if they are not doing it correctly, like they're like, yes, yes, and then go right back to talking, you need to stop and you need to practice that. So take it down and say, okay, when I say class, class, you say yes, yes, you stop talking, you look at me, because I'm about to tell you something important. And I find that extra thing, I'm about to tell you something important, really helps make a difference because kids then know like, oh, she's not just randomly saying something. It's something I actually need to know. It doesn't work with everybody, but you know, it's, it's more helpful. Though if the kids understand the why, they're much more likely to listen to whatever you have to say. So, um, and we would practice that and we practice it a couple of times. And if they do it correctly, then they earn a point. And maybe for the first week or the first month, every single time you do your attention getter and they do it right, you get a point. And every time you do your attention getter and you don't get it right, you get a point. But make sure that you are being very clear with your expectations. And if you have consistent problems that you are stopping and not just addressing them, but you are practicing proper behavior because the kids need to practice their proper behavior. Should they know how to act? Probably. Do they? No. So you gotta, you gotta stop and you gotta, you gotta stop. You gotta take back and you gotta teach them how to be a human being. That's number one. If you're just constantly earning points, they're not earning any points. There's that. The other problem that I have run into in the past is when I had a class where it was very split down the middle, you had like half the kids who were doing a great job, half the kids who were just not gonna listen to a word you said, could not care less. If you are in that boat, <laughs> there's kind of two things you need to do. First of all, you need to find out what they actually will respond to. Will they behave for food? Will they behave for game time? Will they behave, like what can you do that they will want to work for? That's what you need to find out first. What can you incorporate in your lessons that they'll want to do? So you need to find out second. Um, and then you might have to branch out. So like in the past, when I had classes like that, you know, it's just so unfair to keep punishing the kids who do such a great job for the other kids who just constantly wouldn't. Um, so what I did is in those, I would not use teacher versus student points and I would do something else instead. I usually did a raffle system. So um, I would have individual students, I'd say, you know, so-and-so go put your name in, so-and-so go put your name in and for doing a good job. And then at the end of the week, we would pull out names for kids who were doing a good job um, and they got a prize. So that way I didn't have to buy tons of prizes, but we did have a little incentive but you gotta figure out what they're gonna want. And it's, I'm not saying it's easy. Listen, first of all, today, today, today was not my favorite day of life. Um, but 
I've had a lot of classes that are really not great. Actually, I had someone observing me today and she was like, oh my gosh, your classroom has been so good. And I'm like, that's because I've had to practice so much and I've had to try so many different things because I've had a lot of classes where he really, really, really needed to work at it. So trust me when I say, this will work for the majority of your classes if you do it with fidelity and if you make sure that you are practicing and teaching those routines and those things that you expect to see. I know classroom management is not easy. I know I have, I used to work at a school for six, six years where um, when I would tell people in town where I worked, they would, I literally had someone one time say, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And I was like, like I worked there on purpose. Like, it's, like what are you talking about? Um, I didn't think it was that bad. But alas, regardless, that's not the point. The point is I understand where you are coming from. That's the reason I said that. I understand where you are coming from um, and you just, you just gotta figure it out. I do have a back to school course, by the way. It's a back to school boot camp. It has a whole huge module about classroom management. You may not be watching this during back to school time, but the classroom management section, I mean, you could really use any time of the year and we go through like everything that I use, all the stuff. So if you need help in that direction, I'll link it down below just in case that's something that interests you. And yeah, go check out my other classroom management videos. And if you have suggestions for rewards, leave them down in the comments because I'm always curious what we can use for rewards. So let's make the comment section really, really good down there. Okay, I'll see you in the next one, bye.